Okay, so I've been a long time follower of Rupert Spiro's videos and I got a book over there, all right? Now, I cringe at the idea of people following a guru uh, blindly or following them so much, believing in what they say so much until they believe in pretty much everything they say. And if they got a question like, is consciousness created by the brain? Then they believe whatever that person says. And I must admit that I have um, sort of, there you go. I've done that a little bit, I think. I've kind of edged into that a little bit. But when, so I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna talk and see what happens. So, does the brain create consciousness? My arguments before have been, um, no, how could matter create consciousness? Because in our experience, um, every, there's nothing that we are not aware of, okay? So even matter arises within consciousness, you could say. So in the same way that the screen can't be a part of the movie, okay? We're gonna get my hand gestures in here because they, they really communicate. But uh, I broke my tripod the other day. All right. So, but still, I just, I am yet to see how this means the fact that I'm always conscious, okay, and everything I experience is something that I'm aware of, I fail to see why this means that the brain does not create consciousness. Okay. Because to me, it's perfectly plausible for two people to have brains which create consciousness okay, which is experienced in their first person experience as a formless, dimensionless, not even a thing, no thing, okay, because all things are objects of awareness. So <clears throat> I fail to see why two people can't have two subjects, all right, so like, I mean, two people can't have a subject awareness, right? And so I, I've said that in experience, we can't find a limit to awareness, okay? Let's go into awareness, right? We're aware, right? Can you find a boundary to awareness? Uh, even if you could, that would be an object of awareness. It would be something that we are aware of if we could find a, a limit to awareness, so. But even so, why can't a billion brains create this same experience? This same property, I don't know, what do we call it? And I want a really good debate in the comments, okay? Uh, off camera, as I often do, I talk, but I talk to something random, okay, without the camera recording. And I did a whole, basically a whole video about an idea of mine, which is to start a debate club, okay, online, okay? And just how I think humans are at our best when we can discuss ideas that are maybe completely opposite, okay? And in the, for the purpose of sorting the wheat from the chaff and getting to the truth and taking away beliefs which are false. And because uh, it makes us humble, makes us humble. But yeah, so I'm sure some of that conversation will come up.
in this one. But yeah, there was a comment in a YouTube videos of Rupert Spearers, which, and the video was about uh, the brain and consciousness, okay? Does consciousness arise within the brain, I think it's called. And that comment really made me go, okay, made me kind of doubt. And I, if I can find it, I'll put it in this video, okay. But yeah, so I noticed I was being dogmatic. I actually was, I, I was, after this, okay, this was yesterday. So last night I was in my kitchen and the song, losing my religion, right? Was playing in my mind. Cause it felt like I was losing a religion. So, that's so crazy. Very mild. Okay, by the way, just very mild. But like, still, it's a sign that uh, I was believing more than I was scrutinizing, perhaps. But by the way, here's the, the thing. Here's, here's an important thing. Is that uh, I've previously said that we could be happy no matter what happens. And I still stand by this. Okay, I still believe oh, legend he's still um one of my best friends seth <coughs> well okay so yeah i still s suggest that everybody regardless of what happens in experience can or is absolutely happy which is overlooking this and I still say this because even if consciousness is created by the brain we still can't be un we can't be conscious of unconsciousness okay we can't be conscious of unconsciousness even if the brain creates consciousness and the nature of consciousness is independent from the movie <laughs> It's independent from the things happening in life. Now you might even say, you, you can go one step further and make them one, but for the purpose of this, let's just say that awareness is independent from the stuff we're aware of. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I've actually, I think, I've, I think I have experienced seeing the truth of absolute oneness but there's no separation between awareness and what is being what we're aware of. I think this is called something, something Samadhi. Okay. But, um, but yeah, let's debate. I want you to pick apart everything I'm saying here. Okay. So, okay. And since the nature of consciousness, is it's not even empty you can't even put an adjective on it because whatever we if i said it's empty then i'm i'd have to be aware of emptiness i'd have to be aware of that property so it's completely propertyless and even that right so and since that is the foundation of like we can't go further back than that in our experience then why can't we sort of stay there all the time or why can't we be aware of being aware all the time and since it is um quality lust we can we can say it's absolutely at peace so, I mean, the awareness which you're using to be aware of this video 
does it have a problem with anything? Could it have a problem with anything? Because the mind can have problems. It can worry, it can criticize, it can hate, it can love, it can do anything, right? But we're always, it's always an object of our awareness. And we are a subject. We experience life as a subject, as a subject in life, right? So I still say that you can be happy all the time. It's just a case of remembering not to overlook our true nature or our most fundamental nature, which is awareness. And since we can't be uncon since we can't be conscious of unconsciousness, I mean, really think about that. Uh, then we're aware all the time. Even if the body died along with the brain, um, you, you would say, well, we'll experience unconsciousness then, wouldn't we? But how can you experience unconsciousness? The very fact that it is an experience means that you're conscious of it. So it's just uh, what's changed for me is whether or not, I'm just not sure anymore whether the brain creates consciousness. And in the experience of being a human, it, it just doesn't matter to me whether or not it does be, because my experience will be the same. But uh, it's, it's tricky, uh, you know, I think I'm learning not to come to absolute conclusions just yet, like, you know, oh, so, yeah. So let's debate in the comments, okay? Say what you think is true, or, or like, I don't know, try and help me out, try and help people out. And like I said, um, humans, we're like at our best when we're debating, I think, because what does it show? It shows that we can discuss ideas without having to be aggressive. And I think that's really the mark of a mature human being, one of them. And as I was saying in my conversation with myself, we usually think that if aliens came down, they'd think we're very dumb, we're very stupid, but if they came down during ancient Greece or Rome, when they were debating a lot, I don't know if it was rowdy, but I think they would be far more impressed. So yeah, let's go. Let's, let's think, let's go. Does the brain create consciousness? Does it matter? And I wanna hear from people who are have also really studied Rupert Spira's words and taken them into their experience and verified, I wanna hear from you, your answer to the question, does the brain create consciousness? If so, why? If not, why not? All right, see you in the comments.